guys and welcome back to our channel. So today we're going to be talking about emotional support animals, or ESAs for short. And she absolutely hates being held. When she hates something, she puts her head in and uh, she hides her face. So I'm not going to hold her any longer, but she'll, um, she might stay up here. I haven't really talked about my emotional support animal, I don't think ever on this channel, but she has really helped me a lot with my um, general anxiety. Not so much my social anxiety because you can't bring her out anywhere. But she helps with my um, daily night anxiety that I have usually going to sleep. So during this video I wanted to talk about two things. First I wanted to talk about my experience with emotional support animal. Uh, and then I also wanted to talk about uh, like common misconceptions and um, just like facts about them uh, that no, I did not research. I just, um, these are things that I already know. First, let's talk about my emotional support animal. So Lily is her name, but she goes by Kitty. Um, so I got her, oh, two Christmases ago. She is my perfect emotional support animal. All emotional support animals aren't the same. You want one that works for you, even if it may not work for another person, because it's about you, it's not about anyone else. Emotional support animals usually work for depression and anxiety and similar mental illnesses to that. Anything that can help when an animal is near you. She never fails to put a smile on my face. Whenever I'm having a down day, um, just seeing her and knowing somebody like relies on me and also knowing like that she loves me unconditionally really just, just makes me happier. Um, and then anxiety wise, she, whenever I'm going to sleep, she, that's when she likes to cuddle. So she'll, um, I might include a clip here. So everyone's out partying and I'm here with my, oh, my sweetie. So she'll, um, hang out in my arm. Either I'll put my arm like this and she'll just come and like plop down and just lay there for a while. Or she'll, um, I don't have to put my arm there and she'll just come and then say my back's facing this way. She'll usually lay here. Um, so she'll come and put her back against my back. And just having that like, that touch contact really like helps to calm me. She's very um, energetic, but she's very quiet. Like my other cat, would have been a better emotional support animal for me because I've had him since I was five. And he, um, we just have like this unbreakable connection that, that it just, it's so, it's so much different than with her. But he has to have medicine every day and we just thought like it'd be better since he's 13, that it would be better that he just stays at home where he's used to. I got her when she was one and a half, so she must be like three now. Oh wow, she's getting so old. Um, but yeah, it's different because she can she can like adjust to new environments. Plus, when I was living with my ex boyfriend for a short time, uh, I brought her with me, mm, snuck her with me. Um, my parents didn't know. Um, that's a story for another time. But I yes, I stuck my cat and she would live with me there and she uh, adjusted to that fairly quickly. And then after that, bringing her to college, she, she really adjusted like, I'd say the second day. She was completely fine. But yeah, so having her has really helped with my depression and my uh, general anxiety. Some misconceptions um, that I have realized like from reading online and like actually texting one of my friends about them wanting an emotional support animal is that a lot of times like when I first wanted an emotional support animal I thought it was like a service animal I thought you had to 
buy it from a specific place that it had to be trained and all this but actually emotional support animals get zero training i mean some places offer training but it's not necessary and it doesn't qualify them more um i don't really think it makes much of a difference at all so yeah you can just take any normal animal and choose them to be your emotional support animal which brings me to my next point that when you are choosing an an animal to be your emotional support animal you want to choose one that clicks with you it just it brings it does the job that an emotional support animal is supposed to do second you can pay a hundred dollars to this one organization and they will qualify your animal as an emotional support animal by hooking you up with a therapist don't do that if you have a therapist like any therapist will do you can do absolutely any therapist if you don't have a therapist, I think there are like one-time therapists, like therapists will do like one-time sessions, but um, depending on why you want the emotional support animal, you may need to have that um, like checked over time or renewed, so you may either need to officially see a therapist or you may need to go back to either that therapist or some other therapist. So for me, I have to get a yearly letter from my therapist saying like, oh, this animal is an emotional support animal, she helps because of this, and it's like a long, just one letter. I don't know much about planes, but I know that you can bring emotional support animals on planes, but I'm pretty sure you have to pay extra for that. Yes, you can have your emotional support animal living in any um, living situation with you. It is illegal for them to turn you away for this. Um, but it is not legal for you to bring it outside of that housing arrangement into some other kind of uh, facility like a grocery store or any kind of store. I think that's the biggest misconception is that you can bring animal, um, you can bring emotional support animals around with you just like service animals. So to wrap it up, um, I just want to go back to how Kitty has helped me and specify that um, I have stopped having my, she's scratching the rug. She has helped with my nightly panic attacks um, and anxiety attacks and now um, I, I still get a bit of anxiety at night, but the amount that it has decreased has completely changed my life. Um, being able to have her in my room with me just, it just makes, it makes the, a whole world of a difference. Do I recommend that you get an emotional support animal? That is, um, a tricky question. I do not think that everyone should have an emotional support animal. I think everyone should have an animal, but I don't think that everyone needs to label their animal emotional support animal because of like how popular they're becoming, that it's becoming um, more of like a way for people to sneak their animals into college um, or into like houses, house arrangements that like otherwise they wouldn't be allowed to have animals like apartments. Um, that I just don't think that's right and that definitely like can in the future screw it up for people who actually need or get a lot of support from emotional support animals. So I say that if you have found that being around an animal has caused you some kind of relief, whether it be with depression, anxiety, whatever, um, if you find that it is helpful when you need it, not just like in general, like I mean all animals usually help people, but um, if you actually need it, then I think yes, you should have an emotional support animal and you should look into it because it, if you have a therapist, it, it's, it's completely free to get one. It, it doesn't, it just requires a letter, you just gotta talk to your therapist about it and boom, you got, you got an emotional support animal. Also, just a random thing, you can have both. You can have an emotional support animal, you can have a service animal. You can also have multiple emotional support animals. I've heard of that. Yeah, so this video wasn't 
uh, extremely organized. It was definitely more positive than the last one. It was like talking about fun things like animals and I love cats. So cats. I hope that you guys learned something from this video. If you did, uh, let me know. As always, uh, you can email me in the uh, description box below. You can follow me on uh, Chronically Izzy, which is my Instagram, which um, I do post a lot on. And um, as far as that goes, I will see you guys next time. Bye!